All right, Matt Mitchell here, and this video is called More Ideas for Doubling Your Productivity. This is actually uh, sort of the second part to the other video I just did, which is called Seven Changes I've Made That Doubled My Productivity. I have that linked below. If you didn't watch that video, go check that one out first, uh, or check it out after this one. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, in this video, I'm going to give you, uh, let's see, looks like six, six ways that you can uh, double your productivity. Uh, at least these are six ways I doubled mine. So um, I know other people have tried these as well. So um, try them out, see how they work for you. Number one, Take a once, sometimes twice a day, 10 minute break, okay? This is where people might differ from one person to the next. Hold on one second. Um, one second here. This is where people might differ from one person to the next, okay? But uh, some days you'll need a couple of, of 10 minute breaks, okay? But chances are you'll need at least one each day. Now, I happen to believe this is very beneficial, more so than you realize, uh, as discussed in the book, The uh, Power of Full Engagement, which is by Tony Schwartz and Jim Lair. If you haven't read that book or listened to it on Audible, I highly recommend it. It's called The Power of Full Engagement. It talks about how crucially important rest periods are for a highly, highly busy, productive person, okay? Which, you know, might fundamentally sound like a contradiction, but actually it's not, it's not at all. So um, you'll notice that on those days after a night where you don't get much sleep, um, you'll feel like you need more of these little 10 minute breaks, okay? You'll also have much less patience, much less willpower, more anxiety, less focus and you'll be more irritable, okay? So don't forego sleep and, uh, you know, make sure to take your, your rest breaks. Um, sleep is a very necessary evil, okay? Uh, don't ever forget that. Number two, end on a relaxed but productive note. Being productive does not necessarily mean that you're hunched over, grinding away all day, doing debilitating work or tasks all the time, okay? I've recently learned that you can be almost blissfully relaxed and still get a lot of stuff done in the evenings. Um, I'll use myself as an example again here, and then you can think of ways you can apply this to your own day-to-day -day schedule. But I stop working at 7 p.m., okay? On my, on my business. Uh, not this one, my other one, okay? I drive five to seven minutes down the street to go home. I live right down the street from my office. Uh, if it's Monday, I grab my mail, um, but I'll always cook a, or most of the time anyway, I'll cook a delicious dinner of protein, green vegetables, and potatoes. At least that's uh, what I'm eating these days for dinner. Uh, I do intermittent fasting, okay? Um, but even with intermittent fasting, I don't eat a big lunch. Dinner for me is my big meal of the day, okay? But that's okay because my evenings are only lightly productive. I'd rather, you know, go hard early in the morning and in the afternoon, okay, with my day's to-do to -do list. Um, just like I talked about in, in the last video and then slow it down in the evenings. That's how I would rather approach, you know, my days, okay? So this does not mean you go home and sit on your ass and watch TV and eat Doritos. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? Um, what I mean by a lightly productive evening is I'll, after I eat dinner or right before, I'll, I'll burn four to five grams of Kratom um, also known as God's Plant, okay? Uh, I wrote two awesome articles on Kratom. I've, I have those linked below, check those out. Uh, I have a video coming out on, on those articles here soon as well, but 
Yeah, I'll burn four to five grams of kratom um, right before or right after I eat. And then I'll either work some more on this channel or my blog. Um, usually when I'm working on the blog, I'm writing, which is very therapeutic and relaxing for me, especially right after drinking kratom, okay? Um, or I'll listen to a podcast that teaches me valuable things. Um, or I'll read more, or I'll watch YouTube videos from the guys running my favorite blogs, okay? Um, or, or, you know, channels. Uh, another thing you could do is go back to the gym. Hopefully you've already gone to the gym uh, by this point in your day. And just take time to sit in the sauna while you listen to an audible book or a podcast. Okay, consuming content via an audiobook, like usually through uh, Amazon's Audible, or a podcast, um, or even YouTube, okay, does not mean you aren't being productive, okay? It does not mean that you're not being productive. If you're learning things and advancing your knowledge and wisdom, then there's no better way to wind down your day, in my opinion, than, you know, to listen to a podcast, an audio book, or an educational YouTube video. Just make damn sure, okay, here's a little tip here. If you're someone that likes to consume a lot of content, by that I mean books, podcasts, uh, YouTube videos by content creators, if you're somebody that likes to consume a lot of that, just make damn sure that, you're con that consuming content is not the only thing you're doing. Make sure you are creating, you're, that you're as much of a content creator as you are a content consumer, okay? Uh, just a little tip there, okay? Um, so, let's, let's jump to the next one. Number three, don't eat dinner too late at night. If you're gonna go to bed at 9 p.m., make sure you do not eat later than about 6 p.m., okay? Am I telling you what to do? Yes, okay, I am. Don't wanna to listen to me? Fine, I'll see you in a few years once you're fat, okay? Um, all right, well, I mean, maybe I'm being a little mean there, but I'll tell you something, eating too close to bed consistently is a surefire way to at least prevent you from looking how you want to look, okay? This is something I learned uh, when I was 25. Don't eat too close to bed, and I've actually been breaking this rule lately, which is why I'm a little heavier, but um, yeah, I mean, it really helps out as far as uh, losing weight and keeping it off. Optional, have a glass of wine, okay, a drink, okay, a drink, not five or six drinks, a drink, or do what I do and have, you know, four to five grams of kratom, okay. Number four, next one, relax and enjoy yourself a little bit each night. I really don't do enough of this myself actually, but I do think it's beneficial to have one night each week in addition to Sunday nights where you really relax. Um, maybe that means you watch a few of your favorite shows. For me, this is Friday night, okay? I used to go out on Friday nights, but that's changed here in the last year or so, uh, even though I'm still single. Uh, going out more than one night per week is just not conducive to my life's mission or my energy levels. Um, right now, the most important thing in my life is growing this channel and my blog and maintaining daily high energy levels and focus. At, you know, Once I got to be about 31, uh, it became hard to continue to go out all the time uh, and be productive and maintain high energy levels consistently. It started getting tough, tough to do that, okay? At around that age, and it's, it's probably only going to get worse as I get older. Um, number five, don't spend more than 15 minutes of your night on social media or YouTube, okay? Um, the problem is most people abuse YouTube and waste time watching stupid, pointless videos. Uh, not educational uh, content creator videos. They'll watch, you know, 
stupid shit, right? So I don't know about you guys, but I sure as hell can get sucked into watching um, just any YouTube uh, video, uh, even the ones like what I'm describing here that aren't necessarily educational. Um, so, you know, you have to be aware of it because next thing you know, an hour of your night has gone by and then now all of a sudden I'm cutting into minutes that should have been spent sleeping, okay? It's especially easy to do this when you're laying in bed at night after turning out the lights. So be very careful, okay? Um, its danger is in its ability to subtly creep up on you. Those late evening minutes that should be spent sleeping, okay, especially if you're somebody like me who gets up very early or tries to get up very early, um, you know, is watching YouTube videos until 10 o'clock when I should have been trying to go to sleep an hour, you know, before that. But it's so easy after a long productive day to just want to unwind and watch some mindless content on YouTube, right? So you have to be very, very careful about this, okay? Um, you don't want your YouTube time to cut into time, into minutes that should be, or hours that should be spent sleeping. So don't cut into them, okay? Um, so this brings me to my next point, which is my last one. Uh, number six, go to bed around 8 or 9 p.m. Nothing productive happens after 9 p.m., okay? You know it and I know it. Stop kidding yourself here, okay? If you're an early riser, and you should be, okay? If you're, uh, you know, a productive person, you're going to have to start hitting the hay at about 8 or 9 o'clock at night, okay? I have a new experiment I'm going to be trying um, here uh, next month, I'm, I'm going to alternate between getting six hours of sleep one night and seven hours of sleep the next night. Uh, the reason for this is because restricting myself to only six hours of sleep each night is just not working for me as much as I wish it would work. Um, you know, I, I do know that I'm okay if I go a couple nights at six hours, just not more than that. So the only logical thing is to try alternating it. Uh, and I'm even gonna throw in a night where I get eight hours, okay? Um, I know that's what I should be getting every night, but damn it, you know, I like to live my life. I don't like to, to sleep through it. So uh, I'm gonna try alternating six hours one night, seven the next, six the night, or six the next, eight hours the next night, seven the night. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that next month. I'll let you guys know how it works out. It is of utmost importance to me that I'm getting out of bed each morning by 4 a.m., okay? Uh, I cannot and will not do this if I'm not going to bed early enough. So, and, and you won't either. So 8 or 9 p.m. is when you want to be crawling into bed and not uh, getting sucked into your phone, okay? Remember, being an early riser will help you on your path to completing your life mission, which is something you should be working on every single day, I ideally first thing in the morning, okay? What's worth doing is worth doing every day. That's a Grant Cardone co quote, okay? You don't have to get up at 4 a.m. like me, but damn it, if you're a busy, productive person, you should, you should try to be getting up by about 5, honestly. I mean, that's just... I mean, that's what ass kickers do. So uh, you simply will get more done every day uh, when you start hours before the rest of the world does. It's that simple, okay? So give these six suggestions a try. Again, if you didn't see the last video, give those seven suggestions a try. They really helped me uh, double my productivity this last year. Let me know how they work out for you in the comments below. I'd love to, I'd lo I'd love to hear uh, you know, how they worked out. Uh, hit the like button if you found this helpful or interesting. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, this is Matt Mitchell from Mission Life Motion. I'll catch you guys in the next video.